Hi there, Michael Palladini, aka MacGyver here. Um, you know, out on the farm, we uh, we have our uh, little three-wheel resurrected golf cart, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we just couldn't build it heavy duty enough to stand up to all the rigors of life on a farm. So we're gonna build us something a little heavier duty, but we want to build it just like a you know, UTV, you know, where you got the engine in the back and the drivetrain, the suspension up front, and a couple seats, and a nice big dump bed, something that'll haul a lot of weight. And uh, the only car, donor car, I could come up with, because I'm going to use a car engine and transmission and all, um, it's going to be bigger than a UTV, but not as big and unwieldy as a truck. So I thought, what about the Pontiac Fiero? They have the engine in the back, it's basically a front wheel drive setup stuck in the back with the wheels pointed straight ahead. That would be perfect, it sits in a cradle, so. I'm started a search for a Fiero. Now, I've come up on a few. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. Uh, is that one in Woodbury? That's like millions of miles away. Milan, I have no idea where that is. Another copy of the Murfreesboro one. Falkville, Alabama. No, too far. Greenbrier, too expensive. Oh, look, Sumner County, that's where I live. So, there it is. All right, and they only want 600 bucks for it. Maybe I can get it for a little less. If you know, if there's anything radically wrong with it, it's only going to be worth scrap value, which is a couple three hundred dollars. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go look at that. And that's in uh, that's out in uh, Beth Page. I've talked to the lady already. And uh, we're going to go see her. So stay tuned. Okay. Now we got the trailer hooked up to the truck and got our directions printed out. I'm going to swing by and pick up uh, uh, Daddy Tech Ant. And uh, he's going to go with me on this little adventure. Now he's a Fiero aficionado. He's actually had a couple, three of them. And. Uh, I'm on my way now, so coming out my extremely bumpy driveway. I'm gonna go swing by his house and pick him up. And then it's off to Beth Page, Tennessee. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, so now I have Daddy Tech in the truck here, and we're getting to go. It looks like he brought some toys with him today. Oh, well, I got 110 volts in here, you know. I don't know how they brought the damn power supply. Well, why don't you go get it? Stubborn hard ass, but anyway, I love him anyhow. from uh, going to look at that uh, 84 Pontiac Fiero. We thought it was an 86, it's actually an 84. Now, to see where we looked at it, negotiated, picked it up, you'll have to tune in to uh, Daddy Tech Ant's channel. He's got, uh, uh, he's had his little mini cam. I got my bulky little mini DV camera, so uh, you'll have to look at his video but uh, anyway I uh, scored me a 1984 Pontiac Fiero 2M4 it's one of the original ones first year of course the original engine blew up because they all had porous rods in them and 
the dipstick was mismarked on them from the factory and they only put three quarts of oil in instead of 4.5 so they were kind of doomed from the get-go but of course this one's had a uh, uh, an engine replacement supposedly but he couldn't get it to run so there's a lot of ifs and ands and you know uh, a lot of taking people at their word so needless to say uh, I scored the car for four hundred and fifty dollars so I'll uh, take you for a little walk around and I'll tell you what we're going to do with it and here we have our 1984 Pontiac Fiero and uh, it's actually in pretty decent shape for an 84 of course the hoods all bleached from the sun and everything but uh, and the uh, the interior is not too shabby. Of course, I'll only be using a, a few bits of it, but here's the plan. Uh, I've been looking to try and find a, uh, a utility vehicle for the farm. And all I can find are these side-by-sides and your John Deere Gators and stuff like that. And they are just so ridiculously, ridiculously expensive. So, if I'm going to pay anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars for a utility vehicle, that's nothing really but a souped-up go-kart with a motorcycle engine on it. Uh, you know, I'll build what I want exactly if I'm going to go that deep into something, because all the ones I've driven, and I've driven the big ones, the Kubotas and the John Deere's, and and then I even checked out some of the cheaper Chinese ones, like the ones at uh, uh, Tractor Supply. And, uh, you know, they just kind of leave you, eh, you know, okay, it's all right, but it's not really what I want. So I need something a little bigger, a little stronger, but not quite as big as a truck to go running around this 14 acres with. Now, the cool thing about the Fiero is okay and I specifically wanted the 2.5 liter four-cylinder with an automatic transmission because that way you know Tammy can get in it and drive it around the yard or whatever needs to be done so it'll be an automatic and not a stick but uh, plus it'll drive a lot smoother and the whole drivetrain back here in the back of the Fiero okay bolts up to the underside of the body so it's almost like pulling a Volkswagen engine out, you know, it's all like four bolts and the whole thing comes out. And the only thing that I have to fabricate on my frame for the, for the UTV is where the top strut towers mount, which is there and there. So um, I think I can do it. It'll be an interesting project we're going to undertake. And I uh, had to go pick up a battery and we'll see if... Uh, he says it wouldn't start because he couldn't get the fuel pump to work and he wasn't sure about the time in and this and that and the other so he could have been blowing smoke up my butt who knows but even if the engine is blown to hell that's not the end of the world because it's an old 2.5 liter and parts are everywhere for them and they're not expensive so uh, you know, it's not a huge deal so check the basics oil and all that and everything looks good so we're going to play with it, put the battery in it, and see if I can get her to crank up. Okay, so I verified that uh, the car indeed has a bad electric fuel pump. So i got a little trick here to uh, be able to start it and run it without the fuel pump. Just for the purposes of uh, testing the engine and making sure that the engine is uh, uh, viable. So. I'll show you what I've done here. Back when I worked as a mechanic many, many years ago, I had a fuel injection flush kit. And what this is is basically an aluminum uh, container with a hose that ties into the uh, fuel injection feed there. And what we're doing is, is we've got the return line crimped off. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to put our fuel in this bottle and then we can pressurize it with air 
right there and that'll give us enough fuel pressure to uh, to run the engine at least know if it runs so, so we're gonna do that here and uh, we'll see what happens there we have it. Wasn't going to run perfect because the pressure in that little container wasn't right. It only takes like 9 to 13 psi. And uh, I probably had that little can pressurized way beyond that. So, But we know it runs and uh, we know it's not knocking the rods everywhere. So that was $450 very well spent. So now we can uh, work on dropping the drivetrain out of it and I'll see if I can't sell off what parts I can't sell off of this car to make some of that money back and then we'll get on to building our frame. So I want to thank you for watching and uh, my little... Uh, a little impromptu channel here and uh, stay tuned for next time in the next step of the project see ya